You're listening to a Galactic Network podcast. The Podcast of Terror is a show with adult themes run by adults for adults. Please do not have your children listen to this show. It might be beneficial to them in the long run, but please, please wait until they are older. This is one of those things. It's like when you laugh when you're playing bingo and, and 069 comes up and you have a chuckle and your mom, your kitty says, uh, uh, Mommy, Mommy, why, why are you laughing at 069? And the mommy says, uh, when you're older. It's one of those kinds of things. Mommy, Mommy, can I listen to Podcast of Terror? Sure. When you're older. This is a show with adult themes and some childish behavior. A lot of dick jokes. Uh, so please, please, please. Uh, If you want to avoid the swearing, if you want to avoid spoilers for your favorite horror movies, and if you want to avoid really, really lame, petty dick jokes, do not listen to this show. It is not for you. Corey, how often do you wear a shirt? Not as often as you would think. Yeah, it's always nice to cover up your nipples, and maybe your neighbors are complaining because they're hairy. I know you wear wear shirts when we do these shows. That's about it, from what I understand. It's more that I just give off a glare that blinds drivers by. It is hot in California, so I assume that you sweat. There's a there's a slight sheen to you, and the California sun just. Pshh, I don't even sheen. I estevez. <laughs> that that is, if you do not want to estevez in public, we have two places in which you can go. We got two coupon codes to make your life a little cheaper. Uh, you can go visit uh, frequent guest and friend of the show Matt Vincent. His his website thehate.com. That's the. H-V-I-I-I.com. Use the coupon code HBG15 for 15% off your order. Maybe you hate him. I don't know. He's, he's kind of a likable guy. But if you hate him and you want to go spend your money somewhere else, we got this other place. Go to statusfearmerch.com. Uh, another uh, sponsor of the show, friend of the show. He does all our artwork. He's a really nice guy. He does all the, the art for my band, except for the stuff that Corey's wife draws. Head over to statusfearmerch.com. Use the coupon code TERROR. Get you a little nice discount there. <laughs> Uh, welcome to episode 113 of the podcast, the Dirt Production of the Galactic Network. I'm your host, Matt Stein. With me, as always, is uh, Corey. I'm about to lose my fucking mind, Scott. Corey and I have been talking for about 15 minutes. I'm still f- so sick as fuck. Corey's about to have a heart attack. Um, I stopped him mid-sentence so that I could record this so I could play it for the entire world. He said it was okay. I'm not just like putting him on blast on the internet. Um, so, all right, Corey. You, you can now once again talk at length about your insecurities and we'll pass this off as our podcast well i i'm, I'm not going to go too much into it again uh, it's it's at the if if anybody goes to youtube anymore because youtube is trying to like long dick everybody who's a part of it um <laughs> if you go to look to youtube and you look at podcast of terror you can find my my 10 minute rant about my That's my true. life falling to shit at the beginning of the video um or matt can can record it and paste it on to the end of this i don't care nope, i'm um, lazy yeah i know i figured but <laughs> I, I I do like I keep kidding around about like oh maybe I'll do another show maybe I'll do this other thing I have I've had a URL for a couple of years for a show that I'd like to do but I still can't figure out what that show is and then finally I just kind of thought well, well shit you know what's the most interesting thing about me not much but if I could pinpoint one thing that might be interesting it's the fact that I feel like in the next twelve to eighteen months. I am probably going to snap to such a degree that I'm going to become institutionalized or shot in some sort of public area. And wouldn't it be fun to watch this guy who was seemingly normal, seemingly, you know, as, as close as I can get, <laughs> just watch him fall to fucking pieces in, in, in a, in a public viewpoint, like, so that one nothing can really be said like oh you know he seemed like such a nice normal guy until all of a sudden like no you fucking you can see it happening um and i'm not i'm not violent i i don't want to get anybody mistaken to think that i'm gonna do something like no violent to anybody but i really feel like my mentality is getting away from me and the most normal i feel is when i do things like talk on a podcast about feeling serial killers and oh, murder monsters and and rape tortoises or whatever else is in here so uh, if, if you skimmed through what Corey just said in 12 to 18 months i'm gonna need a co-host so I'm yeah t- starting to take applications now 
Um, you don't get paid. You have to deal with me. Oh, yeah. Uh, right. it, yeah good luck monetizing at this point with yeah. the, the right things are going on that. Fucking it's everything. Just... Everything fucks oh. you. Like, it, it's... We... <sighs> Yeah, YouTube's fucking everybody. Although we don't monetize his videos because we get them all taken down anyways. Because right, we don't want to break the network. Yeah, we say fuck too much, and, um, and maybe a couple other things. Um, also, <laughs> but, but YouTube, YouTube today just made it harder for people to monetize. People who have been on it for years and actually have collected money from it are now going to be in dire shit straight. When when uh, when Tom Merritt is in danger of not being able to monetize his stuff on YouTube. Like that's, that's messed up. Cause yeah. that guy yeah. has, has earned his audience, but has a, a big audience. We uh, have, have seen our, our numbers drop, but according to new data, it seems like, Oh, they're just reflecting what I, the actual numbers were all along. And you've been fooling yourselves. So we've I, always well, turned around think, and said I that we had seven listeners. Uh, it's starting but to look like that. <laughs> we're, we're probably we're probably three listeners. And hey, you know what? If you're one of the three listeners, we love you, man. You are worth it to us. Uh, it, the the numbers don't matter. It's it's an arbitrary bullshit thing, anyways. Because what really counts is talking to the people. You know, next week we're gonna have a a guest on who started in as a fan and and has now become a friend of the show mostly that because he is, sent me booze. That's like the quickest well, yeah. way to get on the show is just send me a send me liquor. But we got we got Growly Bear in the chat, mm -hmm. and Growly Bear is not. I mean, he. <clears throat> yeah, I guess he would consider himself a fan, but we but consider him a friend. friend. Yeah, Growly, yeah, where's exactly. my liquor? <laughs> <laughs> a friend who doesn't put out. I'm kidding. But uh, I, I just we we appreciate every single little bit of someone's attention, uh, or or someone who just like the, who the downloads fact. us, who watches us, who who finds us and doesn't call us. Uh, hipster fat fucks. Yep, yep. Uh, I for once didn't bring that one up. So yeah, I know. I, I just love to bring it fact, up to you. The fact that once in a while people will say like, "Hey, man, why aren't your shows longer?" Uh, that's that's kind of it's very flattering because it's, sometimes it's I think these are too long. I rant on at the end of the episode. <laughs> I, I I'm I'm always surprised that people will listen to us and that like we started out doing half an hour shows and people are like you really got to do these longer ones and then we put out a couple three hour shows and people listen to those to the end too has a lot to do with uh <laughs> has a lot to do with who our guest was but that doesn't matter um speaking of Growly, i do want to point out he did say something in the chat that uh cory he, he basically said your life is just downhill from here um get your shit together or you're gonna die and then he said something about me lick lick her, not liquor. I see what you did there. Uh, by the way, it can't be downhill because I'm already at the bottom. It's just oh, one big it can always get hole. worse. It, it's just it, it's not downhill. I just fall into the fucking you know grave. That's all it is. That's true. Hey, you'll get to use your Casper sleep box. I I I don't improv. Much. I mean, I don't think about what I say. Yeah, I, I guess that's sort of improv. I say that's a shocker. I'm sure to anyone listening. But I was kind of happy with my Casper Sleepbox ad. <laughs> do you want to do it again, real quick? No, no. It, it, okay, it's it, it's on Else Nerds. If they if they got three listeners, that would be terrific. I see. I see uh, what you're doing. You're now cross promoting. Um, I don't ever listen to Else Nerds, so I can't confirm or deny if you ever bring up this show. I listened I to it once, you. and that was the time I was on it. Um. We talked about the ask. Critters TV series that's coming out on the Go90 channel from Verizon this week. Yeah. And it was discussed when the story went into the 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 logs and stuff is, well, but isn't that a, a podcast of terror story? Should we skip that? And I'm like, podcast of terror yeah. doesn't do stories anymore. Yeah, I'm lazy. It, it's just me and Matt Complaining. talking dumb shit for, <laughs> yeah, for 20 minutes. Just, just two old men screaming at clouds. And uh, it's a Simpsons reference. And then we we do our 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 review, which I I dominate most of that conversation, anyways. So yeah, anybody who asks for a longer show but means um, can Matt do a longer show? I I feel for you. Unfortunately, Matt is uh, is tired and doesn't have enough oxygen in his lungs because it's, it, one of them is filled with beer. It's literally a keg. Uh, <laughs> so I feel like garbage, and I was like, maybe I won't drink. Um, but I had to keep up the, uh, the, I don't know. I, Mike was like, 
my train, proof. Right? My train of <laughs> my train of thought ran into cold medicine right there. Um, I was going to drink a hot toddy, which is just hot hot whiskey, water, and honey, but I don't have any lemon. Yeah. Oh man, yeah, which probably would have been really yeah. good. No, there's a really good slow cooker recipe for that that Alton Brown has done, but I'm sure uh, Amy Frost uh, has has a ton of recipes for for good drinks to help you when you're feeling blue. Do they have whiskey in them? Some of them. I'm sure I would like those. Yeah, you should you should ask her about that. She was gonna do a show. I know. Whatever happened to that? I I think she's busy. I think she oh, she's got I, yeah, stuff on her plate. She's more popular than we are. She is. Uh, her Overcast show. I mean, it, now that Overwatch is huge on Twitch with the the uh, esports games and everything. I assume that's oh. going to fill up even more of their time. But they, her and JF, have the longest running Overwatch-based podcast and Overcast. And I don't even—I've never played the game, but I listen because they're awesome. It's—it's I, I, it's fun. Um, I bought it. It looks fun. I—I I didn't like care about there being a backstory for all these characters or whatever. It's just a first-person shooter, in my opinion. Which see, and I'm I'm more into the story and the characters because I'm a comic book guy uh, originally, yeah. and and so that part appeals to me. the The competitive play stuff, not as much. But I guess if I was on a team with like JF and Amy and and Nate from Ink Geek and everything, that would be that would make it more enjoyable. Yeah. You know that what I always liked about City of Heroes was when I was playing with my friends. If I was on there by myself, then I didn't want to team up with anybody. It was just like I don't know you, man. You know, don't. That's very don't true. I um get in my way. Speaking of games and and growly, I will have to find a toddy, a real toddy from India somehow. Um, Jack from worst episode ever, and I have been playing uh, player unknown battlegrounds on Xbox. I and we were talking about streaming it on Twitch because he, him, and I can co-stream through Xbox. Oh, that's cool. And I'm like, that might be kind of fun. Um, so hopefully, I don't know. I think we're playing again tomorrow night and. We, we I so so real quick. I keep cutting you off, but we no, that's okay. played like four four matches or something yesterday, and uh, and the day before, I don't even know. My days are all running together, um, and like one, I died before the other two guys because you can play it squads, and I and I was like, oh, I gotta go because Alyssa wanted to ride the recumbent bike in our basement, and I was like, she's a seven o'clock. That's when she goes down there, and and I don't want to mess with. I'm very much the same. Like if I say I'm going to work out at this time, I'm working out at that time because if I don't, it ain't going to happen. So it's like seven ten, and she's staring at me, and I'm like, just I hope I fucking die. I hope I fucking die. So I died, and I'm like, all right, guys, I'll see you later. Jack texts me like five minutes later. He's like, hey, we won. <laughs> I'm like, of course, <laughs> of course, the one that I leave right away, we won. But yeah, I don't know. Maybe, I don't know if you're listening and you want to watch Jack and I play video games on Twitch. Let me know. And we'll, we'll I I would watch if up. there's commentary. If it's you guys, yeah, you know, I think we can at the same time. I'll have to talk to him about it, but I think we can stream our audio because I actually don't know how the Twitch overlay works on Xbox. I will figure it out. Yeah. Um, I only know about uh, that PUBGS or whatever. Or yeah, PUBG. PUBG or whatever you want to call it. Um, because Justin Robert Young, who does the Politics, Politics, Politics podcast, uh, which I love and is probably the only thing about politics that I could stomach for the first half of this year. <laughs> Um, he, they did a special over the holidays that was basically the, the the game, except they took all of the presidents from throughout history and took them from their inauguration day. So right when they got elected president and just accepted the honor of being president and dropped them into the game to all do a war against each other. So you get George W. Bush and George H. W. Bush with the the 16 years in between of of Bill Clinton so they don't they don't match up in time uh you get Bill Clinton who knows and is friends with Donald Trump but then Donald Trump who does not like Bill Clinton at all uh and but all these people show up in there and then if they have war training if they have any kind of military training at all uh, if they can use guns and it it weighs them out, and it says basically, okay, who's going to live? Who's going to die? Who's going to last along? Because it's it's like uh, battle royale, except with all of the presidents. And it was really fascinating to hear because of how they scored it, and and who dies just like 
in parachuting, like FDR ain't going to make it. You know that. Uh, <laughs> but also people who are like 300 pounds, like Taft, I think, doesn't make it. Um, but yeah, he just needs to land somewhere soft. Well, yeah, on another person. Uh, so I guess whoever <laughs> Taft lands on. But it, it was so interesting. And I'm like, I really want to see this played out. Like I want... I know that they've taken Sims and stuff, none movies based around the Sims characters or not about the Sims characters, but like use the Sims to make short films and stuff. I would love to see somebody do this PUBG with the presidents, like insert them in there so we can actually see this thing happen. Uh, it was fascinating. So if, if anybody's listening who hasn't heard it and has any kind of interest in it, it's just really funny because they thought this shit through. <laughs> it's it's excellent to hear how it all plays out. It's an impressive amount of thought that went into that. And just yeah. from your description of it. Yeah, I mean, I again, I had little to no knowledge of the game before that. I mean, it's 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 a cool concept, but the problem is is with any cool concept like a bunch of ripoffs came off right away. Like Fortnite oh, yeah. came out, which is a cartoony version with building um I guess I should I should back up. If you're listening and you're not familiar with what this game is, it is a one versus ninety nine battle royale, or you can play in squads of two, squads of three, or squads of four. Everyone starts on a plane. The plane crosses this map, and you jump out of the the plane at whichever point you want. You can go wherever, but you start with nothing. You have to find guns, ammo, uh, armor. You can find clothes. There's like a fucking matrix jacket that I always like finding and running around in. Uh, vehicles and you basically just fight until there's one guy left and it was a really cool concept it was on pc first and <clears throat> i bought it there but jack talked me into getting on an xbox as well and because someone gave me an xbox and all i had to do was fix it and the one time being good with computers came in handy um but yeah so yeah, for- i was gonna say because you you normally you've been a, a ps4 guy yeah i have ps4 and pc and then a buddy of mine, he was big in Xbox and kept trying to get me to get one. And I was on the fence and he was playing one day and has died. And uh, he like just went out and bought a new one. So he gave me his old one. And he's like, if you can fix it, you can have it. <laughs> so it was like, it was a $50 hard drive to fix. Yeah. And reading the internet to figure out how to get the hard drive to work. But that's, it's for a different podcast. Um, I have one of the first PS3s that would play the playstation 2 games that was the reason why i wanted it yeah i remember the big fucking bulbous one (laughs) yeah it's it's up in my closet still i think and and the the blu-ray stopped being able to read disc and i just i went out and bought a a slim one at that point in time well now they have that playstation now where you can pay it's like whatever to stream old games and but xbox started doing that too i can't remember what they called it but xbox you download them playstation you stream them and i know that there's um arguments as to which is better and xbox choose the fuck out of your hard drive space i have like uh i bought world war ii to play with a buddy of mine and then i got uh, PUBG to play with jack and then i've had gears of war 4 and i installed it on there just to see if the hard drive worked when i first got it and that right there is over half of the 500 gig hard drive yeah and what's funny is that xbox remember before it came out one of the complaints about it was that they were saying that you had to have it connect to the internet yeah Yep. And and people were giving scenarios of like, so if I'm in the military and I spend 500 bucks on this stupid ass system and I'm in a submarine for six months, I can't play my fucking Xbox. Well, That's what forced, you're telling me. They were why do you hate, have a connect Why do you hate too? the troops, Microsoft? Why do you fucking hate the? Why do I have to have this camera hooked up all the time too? Why do you like the troops in the wrong way but hate the troops in the way it allows them? To get? Um, um, uh, yeah, Growly, you're not lame for not owning consoles. You just have better things to do with your free time. I also live in a place that you can't, it's physically impossible to go outside for three months of the year. So there's, yeah. I need things to do in my house and you can only jerk off so much until it's, it's red and bleeding and the skin's falling off. Yeah. You, you got to build the other calluses. <laughs> just, yeah. The, the, the bad calluses, I guess. Um, yeah. but yeah, so the, the original Xbox, you needed to connect and, and my buddy gave me the connect with it and he's like, yeah, you can just walk down there and go, Hey, Xbox uh, turn on. And I'm like yelling at the thing and then realize that they changed it to you had to say Cortana. Right. Because, you know, the bitch needs to get hers too. Uh, and if I can't program it to do the the Mr. Burns, hello, Smithers, you are good at turning me on. <laughs> ignore, then ignore I don't fucking want it. <laughs> <laughs> I've always wanted to like do something to a, like program a, a computer to do that when I turn it on. But 
I, uh, I wanted to create a virtual reality of uh, an ex-girlfriend of mine, uh, my prom date, actually, on a TSR-80. Uh, her, her name was Jessica, so I was going to name it Jessica Tandy, because oh, uh, I'm a nerd. Uh, but whatever, you know. Um, I kind of forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> I bet it was good. I ruined it for you. But let's go to this then. If uh, Welcome to the Podcast of Terror. For more on this podcast, including show notes and contact info and subscription links, you can go to gncast.com slash pot. And to chat with us on our Slack channel during the shows, you can go to gncast.com slash sign up. Or you can be like Growly and uh, follow us on YouTube. It's not going to allow us to, to get ads, but we don't do ads. Um, but if you follow us on YouTube, then you can know when we're live and you can come chat with us there. We talked about going to Twitch, which may be easier for some people to do the live thing anyways and, and maybe more enjoyable. We'll still put the videos to YouTube eventually. And so wherever you want to find us, we are trying to get there for you. We want to make it easy on you. Um, but if you if you want to if you want to hang out with us, talk with us, whatever, there's there's possibilities of doing that. And I it's just told true. you how. Um, I remember I was going to tell you now. Uh, I had a plugin for Chrome called called Cloud to Butt, and it would change oh. every, every instance of the word cloud to butt or my butt. So, because at the time, I mean, cloud is still a big buzzword, but you'd read articles and it's like, "Oh, we're going to the cloud," and it would say, "We're going to my butt," and yeah. it was really funny. And the weather was always partly buddy. And then I was working with like a consultant, and I open up a web page, and it just butt. And I'm like, ah, you really didn't find it funny. And I'm like, eh, I should try and be a little more professional. So I got rid of it. Same That's thing with bad. The Smithers. You're good at turning me on. Like here, I would go to work and like open up my computer to work with someone, and it's just there's half naked Mr. Burns. I <laughs> yeah, have we to explain that one to my boss. We had an employee who brought in their computer uh, when I worked at the tech bench. And the, as soon as we we booted it up, it was like there was nudity just straight across the screen. And 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 his excuse was, oh, yeah, my roommate changed my wallpaper and I didn't know how to change it back. It's like, sure. If, if you don't know how to change your wallpaper, then you could not have fucked up your computer this bad. Um, just don't lie to me, man. We get it. We absolutely get it. We just have to turn the monitor. You could have warned us so that it wasn't on a screen that was facing <laughs> the public um, but oh, whatever she told me a story once she works for a worldwide company if you wipe your ass you have wiped your ass with a product that her company makes um and touched by matt's wife on your naughty bits pretty much if you have kids there's a really good chance they wore a diaper that she created um, I'm not making a line for that one because it's already inappropriate enough on the show <laughs> fucking whatever it's a diaper shut up Corey. um she was someone was in a meeting she wasn't in this meeting but the guy like plugged in his laptop and opened it up and there was just porn and he got walked out like an hour later man another good story i uh when i was still in school one of my teachers was uh the network admin for like a hospital like a chain of hospitals around here and uh, he said at one of their locations there was a guy who got caught looking at porn so much that they just took his walls of his cubicle away <laughs> Yeah, we talk about um, doing one of those open offices where there's not, there's no walls. The like the whole front office would just be cubicles essentially, but more open to everybody, so you could see everybody. And I'm like, it, that it, that assumes that nobody ever needs privacy, right? That nobody ever talks on the phone. Right. Um, I, I just like ever watches cartoons. There's, at their there's a mindset, work. yeah. Well, there's a mindset of, oh, well, it makes us all more interactive and everything. And I completely get that because the amount of people I know who will just sit there and and email a question to somebody who's like right next to them is a little weird unless you're trying to track it. So I was it just I was, like I was sitting at work and uh, the, the lady next to me. So on the other side of my cubicle wall called the girl, the one row the opposite direction and one seat back. And like I could hear them talking. And it was really fucking confusing. And I, and I said something. I'm like, why did she call you when you guys are right there? And like, no one could give me a good answer. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I'm just like, people send me an IT ticket, which is what you're supposed to do. Uh, that's the official thing. And I appreciate when it actually fucking happens. Yeah. But they send me an IT ticket. And then I go and I get up and I just go over to them. like to Depending on who it is and what it is. But yes, I agree. Well, 
not even depending on who it is, but it is depending on oh, I'm the situation of like, oh, well, do you? Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> do you, is it something that I need to be at my computer to fix? Uh, or is it something that I need to be at your computer to fix? Or is it something you just need some questions answered? So more often than not, I just get up, I wander over and people still aren't used to having an IT person there, even though I've been there for almost four years now. And they're just like, oh, you're here already. They're like, yeah, no shit. I saw the email. I got up. It sounded like you needed help. Guess what my fucking job is? Uh, it's right. to make it so that you don't need the help anymore. Um, that's that's what I do. But it's it's just really cute because people don't understand that that's the way the world can work. We've we've gotten so standoffish, and I'm a person who doesn't want to talk to people on the phone. Yeah, uh, I, I, I don't like that immediacy. But when I'm at work, the immediacy is kind of important. It's it's what we're all there to do. So yeah, at five o'clock when I'm out of there, no fuck you, you're here for me tomorrow, unless it's an emergency. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Uh, but I, I guess it, when you look at it that way, like the fact that a lot of younger people don't know how to have like in-person interactions is uh, it's really good for us. That's like that's job security right there, because if you can't, if you can't fucking talk to someone, you can't get a job. <laughs> well, it, <laughs> but the, it the danger the is being, of, of the world. The danger of being the likable IT guy is that then people want to approach you with with problems as opposed to just sitting there and saying, I don't want to fuck with talk to it it is horrible yeah. so you the expectation is that you're going to wind up doing more work because of that otherwise they would just sit there and fret but then on the other hand is there's the fucker who gets the virus at 458 and says well i'm not gonna deal with this shit turns off their monitor and walks out the building and then at 5 30 you're like why did everything just blow up on the server what's going on yeah. I'd rather that person have called me. Yeah, and that's another thing, another point that you made is uh, being like personable and working in IT is really, really hard to come by because most people that are good at IT have terrible social skills. And that I think that's just the type of person that it takes to, to be like technical and analytic is usually not social. Yeah, you have to keep your head kind of focused in on, on these yeah. things and, and being a person who, who does that means you don't have as much time or possibly even interest in dealing with people you know it doesn't mean that you're incapable it just might be that that's not where your interests lie and that might have been what made you really great at your job right there's a guy sitting next to is probably one of the smartest people i know but in social situations is he leaves something to be desired and that's that's fine and i've come to understand working with the guy for five years i've come to understand that that's just him as a person um but yeah it is what it is yeah i came into it from the the services aspect from, from so. the back door yeah exactly yeah. i'm i'm just basically an anna kornikova virus just happening in in human form i just snuck in and like infected everybody with my happy cheerfulness as you all heard at the beginning of the show. What? Right. Like you to infect me with your happy cheerfulness. That's true. That's that's your dick, right? Yes. It's cheery because it's small. It's dainty <laughs> like an Ewok. It's fun size like a Snickers. Yeah, it's, it's full of nuts. It's too. the thing that that's most likely to dis disappoint people on Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> it's a toothbrush wrapped up in a Snicker wrapper. Mm-hmm. With a razor blade in it, because of course. Oh Jesus! Hey, so we watched a movie. Yeah, uh, yeah, we did. I actually did. Really, you know that we I did, did like? I this forgot. Movie. I turned it on, and within like minutes, was excited. Yeah, it was really, really a good movie. Uh, so for people who who nope, let's keep being real along. vague about it, and <laughs> not ever saying the name of the movie or what it was about, but how much we. Well, we announced it at the end of the last episode. Eh, you're assuming uh, that they listened to the end of the last episode. That's true. Uh, we watched The Babysitter, which is a Netflix exclusive movie. It came out uh, just a few months ago in 2017. Uh, and we, I want to address this. Growly just asked something about an Anna Kendrick tweet about Enrique and Anna Pornikova. Did, I have no did idea Enrique what that means. Enrique Iglesias bone Anna Pornikova? I think Enrique is married to Anna Pornikova. Oh, is there a sex tape I need to hunt down for a this... friend? Not for me. <laughs> Which one are you interested in? Kendrick, not Enrique. I thought Enrique Iglesias was gay. 
No, that's uh, Ricky, Ricky Martin. Martin. All right. Anna Kendrick has brilliant reaction to being confused for Anna Kornikova. All right, Internet, don't fail me now. <clears throat> Dear Yahoo, how do I get this timeline where I've slept with Enrique Iglesias? Please and thank you. <laughs> uh, oh, because I think Yahoo fucked it up and said Anna Kendrick instead of Anna Kornikova. I don't know. Yeah, that probably is. Uh, by funny. the way, did you uh, also I, see I, that I, some I, website said that uh, John Carpenter was dead? No, fuck them. Yeah, it said uh, today would have been John Carpenter's seventieth birthday, and he is still very much alive. <laughs> and that was like two days ago, I think. Yeah, on his actual birthday. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it, I, I believe I've said this in other places. Anna Kendrick, a treasure. I poker. That's what you do to treasure, is you. Dig it up and stick your dick in it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's also what I do to Twinkies. <laughs> Treasure Island, very interesting book in that last two chapters. <laughs> the fucking the lost chapters of Treasure Island, where they just yeah. start fucking the treasure. <laughs> Everybody yep. takes now a turn with the old treasure chest. Now we know why there's been five Pirates of the Caribbean movies. <laughs> uh, Growley pointed out that John Carpenter responded by saying, "No, I'm not." Is in fact not dead. Uh, Actually, John Carpenter has been dead for thirty years, and he... what we've been seeing is the representation of the thing. Hey, that was a good joke. I liked it. it. Solid. It it plays to our audience. It really <laughs> plays to a lot. Um, but I, we forgot to do the what you drinking. That is well. Uh, you talked about hot toddies, and I figured That's after not that I'm drinking. it was going to be disappointing. No, what are you drinking? Uh, Three Floyd's Floyd Division Five. See, because they apparently like Joy Division. That's. Joy Division. I'm glad that it it was not just my instinct to go to Joy Division and have it be completely wrong. No, you're right. And what do you what do you got there? Well, I think Floyd Division is actually the Joy Division cover band by Floyd from the Muppets, Doctor Teeth, and the Electric Mayhem. Uh, that is my guess. Do you know Dr. Teeth and Electric Mayhem from the no, Muppets? but you just said so many words. And they are... and Floyd is one of the musicians in the Electric Mayhem. And he, as a side project, did a Joy Division cover band. What are you drinking? Tea. Oh, go figure. I'm all amped up on sugarless iced tea. You basic-ass Lipton-ass bitch. I am basic, but my tea is extra. All right, let's talk about the babysitter. Let's talk about it. Um, so, I meant to look to see, to check the age of all of the girls in this. Oh, God. So that I wouldn't be uh, really dirty if I said that I would bang them all. Well, I guess if we've already mentioned Anna Kendrick, we can say that Hannah Mae Lee, uh, who plays Sonya in this, is from the Pitch Perfect movies. Is she? She's the quiet girl. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. Okay. That says things about murdering people under her breath. Uh, I think Bella Thorne might be the closest you have to being legally suspect oh, um she's 20 yeah and the main actress samara weaving who oh, looks never mind there's a very young girl the girl across the street i forgot about her she's very young i yeah I, but the main I, girl i kind of just assumed you didn't mean her so i was clicking through all of the girls in the movie and that popped up and i wanted to i wanted to really put out there that i did not mean the the young girl Yes, but I, I I believe you. The girl who plays B, but you're not babysitting for me. I would lick the sweat out of her butt cheeks. Uh, Samara Weaving, who very <laughs> much who reminded me about. of of Jillian Jacobs, who played Britta on Community. Yes. Yeah. Um. So. Yeah. So so let's let's get into the premise of the movie a little bit first, which is the kids twelve. Is that yeah, it's not, I think that sounds about right. I for some reason thought at first that they had said 14, but it seemed like he got younger as the movie went along. Um, played by Judah Lewis, his name is Cole. He has some interesting parents who like to go to hotels and and hand job each other. I, that was my favorite um, part. <laughs> that was a great like, part. This looks like my Friday night. Um, but he's he's I guess a slow starter like he's not he's not 
a special needs kid or anything, but he's not exactly developed, or at least his parents don't think he's developed enough to be on his own yeah. at 12 years old. Uh, like when I was 10 years old, I I was home alone a lot. It was circumstance part of my mom's work and everything, but also just because it was fine. Um, but in this, they still always have him have a babysitter, which is B. Now, B is I'd like awesome. B. Okay. Uh, but their relationship is really, really good. It's not just like she's his babysitter, but of course she's the object of his prepubescent affections. But she's just really, really cool. Like he's getting yeah. beat up by bullies at the beginning and she comes up behind them and basically threatens their lives uh, to not any small extent. And and uh, you buy into it. Uh, she whispers into one of the bullies' ears what, what she would she do said. to him. I would absolutely love to know what she said because it was apparently very effective. Um, but they play games together and stuff. They hang out. They, they do uh, like games of... Who would your your favorite sci-fi crew be? Like, what characters from what things and stuff like that would they be in this? And that's that's kind of like a lead into what happens towards the end of the movie. Um, and they they play Dance Dance Revolution or something similar to it. And they just <laughs> it's such a great relationship. And if anybody has ever been young and had a crush on their babysitter or a crush on just someone older than you in general, that you know, there's no conceivable way that it could ever happen. But fuck it, you know. I'm a kid. I'm learning how to masturbate just so I can think about this. Um, <laughs> it's incredibly relatable. And all of that itself is already like a really sweet, fun film. Their relationship, um, the the girl that he's he is friends with, which is kind of weird, too, that he he's friends with this Melanie girl. And she's cute and age appropriate, but they just doesn't seem like they've they've hit that idea of them being together at this point. Yeah, you think, oh, yeah, this is all great. And so his parents go away for the night. B is there to to watch over him. The The rules is he's got to be in bed by 10, everything. But they're playing around, and she's like, let's have a celebratory drink. And she gives him a shot uh, of, I don't know, Jack or something. That was clear. Uh, but And he's like, well, aren't you going to have one? So she wanders off to go get one, and he pours his in the potted plant like Harvey Weinstein. And <laughs> because he's not really well interested you, in drinking. You missed the part where uh, he's talking to, I fucking forgot who he's talking to, but basically they say like, oh, you have this babysitter overnight and when you go to sleep, she's going to have a boy over. So Yeah, he's he, talking to, to the girl Melanie. Yes, the girl, the girl across, across the street. Yes. And uh, so he's like, all right, well, I'm going to stay up and see what happens. So when she gives him the shot, he dumps it out so he can stay up to see what happens. Yes, she says, oh, they're probably going to have orgies and stuff. And he has to go look up online what an orgy is. And then <laughs> immediately regrets what the fuck is going on there. Yeah. And so, yeah, so he goes to bed and he he gets up in a little bit and he hears people have shown up at the house. Uh, he had spied on B at some point flirting with some guy outside of a store. Mm -hmm. And so that guy shows up. And some other people show up. The captain of football team, played by Robbie Amell, who was Firestorm in the uh, CW superhero shows, for anybody who knows, and is the brother of Arrow. Uh, Hannah Mae Lee, who plays Sonya, who's just kind of like, I wouldn't say necessarily goth, but is the very typical dark, twisted mean girl. Um, and then Bella Thorne, who plays Allison, is the head cheerleader mean girl. And uh, where is the other guy? The well, I mean, it's it's a horror movie. So the <laughs> one oh, black actor, black uh, Andrew Bachelor, who plays John, um, who is in, in a lot of ways the the primary comic relief in how he reacts to everything, uh, but is also just the funniest motherfucker around and great in the role. Um, he he goes by the name King Bach, by the way. King Bach. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Um, I did not know that. Me neither. So, so these these friends of of B show up, and Cole wakes up to go watch them, and he's spying it on them from upstairs. And they doing teenage stuff. They wind up playing spin the bottle, and it's a spin the bottle truth or dare mix. 
So the bottle lands on you and you can either take the truth or you can take the dare. And they dare B to kiss everybody there. And she goes from person to person, uh, spends a lot of time with um, Mm -hmm. Allison, which was Mm -hmm. awesome. And and you could just see Cole's like, okay, I'm 12, but my penis just turned 13. Um, (laughs) (laughs) But then she gets up to the guy that she had brought that was essentially her date, who's a a nerdy, nebbish kind of guy. And she goes and she kisses him. And as she's kissing him, she pulls out two knives and stabs him square in the head. And then they <laughs> I could try and get blood out of his head. Yeah. And then the right. the and is Andrew, John, John, yeah. John. Uh, he's like, I think my side's broke. You can't get any blood out. And then all of a sudden it just fucking dumps all over him. And he, oh, God, just covers it's him. Fucking hilarious. Uh, so yeah, ritual killing, and then they they kind of explain that they're going to cast a black magic spell. B has this book that the spell is in that is very ancient and very uh, decrepit, so you have to be careful with it. And they need to get the blood from Cole, who B had drugged or assumed she drugged mm-hmm. by giving him the drink, and they go upstairs. And stick him with the needle to draw the blood, and it takes a couple of tries. Now, one of the things you have to know about Cole is that he's afraid of needles. He's afraid of a lot of different stuff, and that's all set up at the beginning to have him kind of work past that in the situation of this. This is a coming of age story uh, for a young boy, uh, young lust, and you know, murder pact. So they they go, and Cole like plays shit really fucking cool, really fucking fast. Like, he calls the cops, he calls 911, says, hey, there's a murder in my house, send the cops, all the stuff, and the lady on the phone, like, okay, you know, but are you all right? He's like, you're right. I have to get the fuck out of here. Good point. Puts on his shoes, starts getting everything together, then they come upstairs, and he, like, gets in bed really fast, plays possum, essentially, to have them, they take his blood, he doesn't freak out, They leave the room, then he gets up, ties the sheets together, goes to climb out the window, but at that point in time, they had actually, like, made him woozy by pulling his blood, so he fell over. And B had realized that there was something wrong because the window was open because it seemed, like, a little too weird. And so they know that he's awake now. And they tie him up, and they bring him upstairs, and they explain him what's going on. But the cops do show up. And that was one of those things, too, is, like, in my expectation of this, oh, the cops show up, and they're either one in on it or too uh easily deterred no the cops come in they confront everybody in the room uh there is a dead body in there there's a lot of stuff and they just fucking slaughter the cops but not without the cops accidentally getting some shots off in there uh and shoots (laughs) allison uh, right in the tit and allison like goes flying across the room, so you assume Allison's dead. No, Allison is not dead. Mm-mm. Allison makes it probably the longest, I think. Um, yeah, with her the moment everybody there. Yeah, uh, the whole rest of the movie is basically Cole trying to escape um, some accidental defending himself, working out way too well. It's a little bit like Tucker and Dale versus Evil. And the the deaths kind of more happen. Like some of it is by his arrangement, but a lot of it is luck. Um, when when John is killed, it's it's more luck. When uh, he gets away from Max, finally, it's it's from luck. The one thing that it really seemed like he had most of the hand in was Sonia's, um, but it did rely on him finding a giant firecracker in his garage that I didn't understand why that was there. Like if it had been referenced or something, um, but it's just like, Hey, I need to find this. I need to find this. They did some cool stuff with the animation over the scenes of like, Oh, I found this. And it's like, way to fucking go or what the fuck or whatever. Um, which was akin to suicide squad, but also kind of reminded me of feast back when we watched how they were introducing the characters and they would tell you a little bit about them. Um, and I, I, yeah, most of this is the journey of Cole defending himself, getting away, kind of growing up at the same time, developing a more mature relationship with Melanie 
And in the end, his his having to face the fact that B, the person that he loves probably the most, uh, really betrayed him. And while she still wants to be his friend and is willing to take him away and and they can be together and stuff, he's like, yeah, but I'm not the first kid you did this to. And you're going to keep doing this, which is a part that I didn't quite get. So B says that they cast a spell and they get anything that they want. But she's apparently done it before. So why does she have to keep doing it? Like she talks about how she had a lousy life and everything. But if she if she's cast it once and it worked, then why does she have to do it again? And why does she need all these other people to be a part of it? Um, and they don't really explain the ritual. They never get around to it too much. Um, but beyond that, uh, Cole's doing all the stuff he does and and be sort of comeuppance and everything. It all pays off really well. It's a really fun flick, and it's funny in all the ways that it's supposed to be. Um, it is a little silly at times, over the top, in, in the way that you would expect. Mm-hmm. But I really liked it. And, and in the end, I didn't even hate the people who were like the murderers, the people who were all doing this. It's it, at one point, the, the, the jock guy, Max is about to kill Cole. And then one of the bullies is egging Cole's house. <laughs> I forgot about that part. Yeah, this is great. So he's like, well, you can't fucking stand for that shit. Yeah. And he's like, really? Like, aren't you trying to kill me? He's like, yeah, but I'm not going to let you die a pussy. So he walks him up and he's like, now go confront that motherfucker. And Cole goes up to the the bully from earlier and he's like, hey, you know, get the fuck away from my house and kind of like gives him shit. But then says, no, seriously, there's a guy here who's trying to fucking kill me. We have to go get the cops. And the bully's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I believe you. Let's go do it. And then cracks an egg on his fucking face and knocks him down and goes off. So Cole still is going to die a pussy. But it it was the moment of like, I'm not going to have you die in such a pathetic way, I'm going to give you an honorable death, which is weird from the, the head jock, but it is still funny. And it, it shows that there's something to each of these characters. That's a little bit deeper than just what they are on the surface. The whole conversation that Allison has when she's like, I just wanted my life to be kind of normal. And I wanted to have some success doing this. And I wanted to be a, what was it? A weather girl or something. And Cole's like, but you're really pretty. You can probably still do all that. And it's not even that big of a deal. And then she just like, she's like, oh, yeah, you're absolutely right. And she's like, well, what do you think we can do? And then she just turns like completely fucking abhorrent. And she's like, you really think that I give a shit what you think of me? And it's just going to go after. It's a fun movie. It's yeah, it is a very fun movie. When when you first told me to watch this, I was a bit skeptical. I hadn't I know knew nothing about it. And. <sighs> Like I said, within like minutes of starting it, I knew it was going to be a good movie, which a lot of new stuff is junk. I made the mistake of watching the new Jigsaw movie. Oh, yeah? Yep. That's too bad. Yep. Um, so the the director of this is McG. And I remember McG from the Charlie's Angels movies. And uh, I, he, I guess he's been a producer on... Supernatural and the new Lethal Weapon show. And the Lethal Weapon show, I thought, was going to be pure crap when it came out. And it turns out that it's actually, you know, it's not stellar TV, but it's fun. It's a lot of good interactions. You, you got Damon Wayans in there, who's great in general. Uh, I like the guy playing Riggs as well. I've, I've seen him in some other stuff here and there. But this guy has done a lot of great stuff. He did the the show Chuck. Um, he did one of my favorite shows, which is Human Target. Like I always think of McG as kind of like a Michael Bay, kind of like all flash, no substance. But he's done stuff, so much stuff that I actually am surprised at how much of his things he's done that I like, yeah. and and in some cases really really like. So when I saw his name at the end, I'm like, oh shit! Well, it makes sense that this is McG. Um, it's it's right up his alley. If if you were gonna say, yeah, that guy's gonna do a horror movie. This would be it because it's overt sexiness uh, in sometimes unnecessary ways. It's it's not none of it is going to surprise you. None of it is really going to shock you in in how any of the characters act, how the story goes. It's it's sort of plain and simple. You know what the story is as soon as it starts to happen, at least if you don't know going in what 
what the babysitter thing is about. Um, none of it is shocking. But it's all really just funny. And uh, the the blood and gut stuff is is over the top. The way that you want from this. And it's it like I said earlier, it's it's Tucker and Dale. Uh, it's it's not quite at the level of Feast because Feast with the monsters and stuff gets really sick. But it is that tongue in cheek horror movie humor um, that is I, to my tastes, at least uh, really good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you is there anything else you want to cover? Do you want to just read it? I don't want to like rush it, but I also feel like garbage and it's late. <laughs> yeah, I know. And and honestly, there's not a lot you can say about it without just describing the whole film. And I, right. I think sometimes I do that a little bit too much. Uh, we don't want to take away if you haven't seen it yet. You know, we obviously the re- reason we tell you to watch the what we're going to watch on the next show is so that you can watch it before we get there. So you can come in knowing about it without having to spoil everything for you. Um, but if you haven't seen it, I want you to be able to enjoy it because uh, I think it's a really enjoyable movie. It's it's not a pass in this case. Um, also, Leslie Bibb and Ken Marino could have been completely throwaway characters as the parents, but were, I think, just as much fun as anybody else in this. You know, and and Ken Marino being from the state, I'd expect that from. Leslie Bibb was great though. Yes. Yes, yeah, so we can rate it. Yeah. You have to go first. Uh yeah. Um God, we just do a one to five, don't we? Yeah. Or zero to five. Yeah. I would watch this a bunch. I don't know that I'd put it on every day, but anytime that I walk into a room and if this was on the TV, if I'm at a friend's house or if my wife is watching it or whatever, uh she hadn't even seen it yet. I, I got to this one before her, which is surprising. Nice. Um I would never say no to watching this again. So I'm going to I'm going to give it a, a 4. Uh I am also going to give it a 4 for pretty much the same reasons like I would recommend this to people, I would watch it again. Um is really enjoy. I am pretty sure I actually told like two or three people to watch it um right after I saw it. So it it's definitely a really good movie. Yeah, um who's the guy who was in the autopsy of Jane Doe? Do you remember? I can look it up. Uh, Emil Hirsch. Okay, fuck me then. He was in The Girl Next Door. That's what I remember from. He's He's been in a lot of stuff, but the kid who played Cole in this reminds me of Emil Hirsch. Uh, this Judah Lewis. I don't know what else he's been in so far, but I, I think for his age, he was particularly good mm. and uh, has a lot of stuff that we should probably look forward to seeing him in. And uh, like you said, the the girl who plays B, uh, Samara Weaving, uh, she was terrific. It it probably the perfect choice to pick for understanding why a kid would have a crush on this person. Um, I guess she was in a few episodes of the Ash versus Evil Dead TV series. Don't remember, but I did see that listed. Yeah. So I, I would highly recommend this movie. You know, it, it's especially if it's free to you on Netflix. That's true. Go check it out. All right, you can contact us by leaving us a voicemail at eight zero five three two eight thirty nine sixty six. You can email us at pot at gandcast dot com, or you can leave us a message on the website. Uh, follow the show on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram at Podcast of Terror, and you can subscribe to this podcast via iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play any of your favorite podcatchers and uh, leave us some feedback, please. So I can read it. We can talk about how nice you are. All subscription options and links can be found at gncast.com slash subscribe. And uh, finally, you can find us on Facebook. The whole network is uh, the Galactic Network. Um, We're doing the whole Amazon affiliate business. So if you go to amazon.podcasthair.com, shop like you normally would. We should see money, but I don't know how that shit works. We don't know how anything works. And at this point in time, it, it's, you know, it, it's it's just a little bit here or there. It's it's supposed, we try to make it as easy for you um, to help us uh, and, and to be low impact. But uh, of course, the, the network does have a Patreon. If you go to patreon.com and look up Galactic Network or Galactic Netcasts, uh, you could help us that way if it's something you're interested in doing. Yeah. But mostly, we really just want to hear from you. Uh, email us, 
uh, find our, our Facebook page. Join us on that. Uh, Maybe you think we should have our own Patreon. I don't know. Email us. Tell us. Yeah. Something I'd Maybe probably set up we if, should if there was a, a want for it. But uh, Maybe. Yeah. Maybe you want to send me suggestions for therapy. I would That's true. I would understand that. It's true. At this point. Email Corey with your coping mechanisms. No substances. He's he's a substance free boy. No, that and that's the thing is I'm getting a lot of people saying substances. And I go, that's great. And I absolutely support other people utilizing but, those substances. I, you, I'm just not that my guy. My one thing is like, yes, I'm stressed out, therefore I drink, but drinking does not make the stress go away. It just causes right. me to not think about it for the duration it still exists so it's i feel like the weed is probably good for anxiety and since it's now legal not just medicinally but also recreationally in california there's very little reason for me not to other than the fact that i'm pushing 50 years old and just never have <laughs> now is not the time to start being a stoner kind of want to go out with a clean record yeah. uh <laughs> uh we're plus everything kind of affects me weird that's true. I've heard a lot of people have really fucked up reactions to it. And and from going to like no weed to ultra super weed is probably not a good idea. Right, absolutely. I I so I've uh, heard, but um where can people find you? Um you know what? It, <laughs> probably in therapy. But <laughs> You know what? If if you want to see one of the things that's holding me together and 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 makes my life uh actually really great, uh, go support my wife. Uh, you can follow her Instagram. She's at hag underscore attack. Uh, she does commissions, but a lot of it is just followers, people who are, are checking out her stuff. She's got her new zine coming out pretty soon. Uh, if you like penises, uh, you will definitely want to get that. I know some of the add-ins that are going to be with the the stuff when it gets all packaged up. It It's a lot of fun. I'm super, super proud of everything that she does. and. Uh, a lot of people do, seem to dig it. So, yeah, uh, hag underscore attack on the Instagram. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and untapped. Uh, I'm at the lifeguard. Two T's. Apparently there's a third T guy rolling around. and Fuck that guy. Next week. Two T's is my favorite rap bang. <laughs> Shut up, Corey. Uh, next week, as we mentioned, we're going to have a friend of the show, listener, uh, Mason Clemens. We're going to be talking about The Grudge. 2004 probably a movie i haven't seen since 2004 should be this is the american version of, of the grudge yeah juan 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 was, was the original yeah i couldn't not remember but yeah it's the american grudge with i think sarah michelle geller yeah sweet sweet cans um speaking of, of crushes <laughs> it's gonna do it for another episode of the podcast of terror thank you guys for listening and we will talk to you next week Stay scary but healthy, everybody. Bye.